weeks, maybe do a, do a bit of this. And really, it becomes an opportunity cost. The concern with take two has always been, as I've mentioned, it's basically a mirror image of Netflix. Now, Netflix hasn't gone down to 230. That's not the point. You know, when a parabolic move goes up, you know, rising tide is going to lift all boats sort of thing. But it's been going sideways as Apple has gone up. So something to think about there with take two, but I'm no longer bullish on that stock. And Apple, you know, we've had these targets for a while, so we do believe in the group. We said, look, it's going to go to a $2 trillion market cap. We said that seven weeks ago. And we're looking at 420, 495, maybe 641. Not too sure about 641 at this point. That would require extreme, extreme level of FOMO that we've never seen before, ever. Um, I mean, it, you know, could happen. You could happen. I mean, you know, if the Nasdaq's going to go 14K, I mean, but for Apple to double from here, that is extreme FOMO. I mean, that would get you a market cap of well above 2 trillion. But anyway, we'll take it one step at a time, 420 first target and 500 on Apple. It's possible. It's possible. Anyway, going back to the S&P 500. So really, it's just about um, not just just not overthinking it. You know, this kind of move, people who make a lot of money in this move are those who know nothing because they have no idea what's going on and just buying calls out of the money calls randomly or those who know a lot but are able to contextualize what is going on. Those who are sort of in the middle, like I told the group, probably the worst time to be learning how to trade and invest and analyze a chart in the middle of a melt up because if you're sort of in this zone here, none of this is going to make any sense. And of course it doesn't make sense. Uh, because, but that's what happens in a way five. It's not meant to make any sense. Anyway, one, two, three, four, five. That could be a two, could be a one, two, and we're just going to bust up out of here. Or one, two, three, four, five. Then you get a two. Or it was the count, as I've said before, one, two, three, four, five, and it's a two. The problem with getting too involved in the Elliott wave count is you're going to end up overthinking it. And like I said, either you know nothing or you know a lot. Anyone in the middle, like most people, you know, 99% of people are in that sort of middle zone where they know something but not a lot, they're going to end up overthinking it. And the thing with these sort of moves, there's a reason they occur every 20 years because people forget about what happened here. Everyone's looking at this, but th this is basically nothing to do with actually what's going on here. Um, it's nothing to do with this or this. I, I don't even think this is going to happen when it when it tops. I think it'll be more of a 20-year uh, bear market um, in some way, shape, or form, either in terms of time or in terms of price, um, basically just following what Japan did back in the 90s. But if you look here, this is what we're going to do. So these kind of moves, they don't occur often. I mean, you could argue we had a move like that back into 87, and we definitely had a move like that back into the uh, stagflation era of the 1970s. I mean, prior to all of this, it had been going up since 1940. So, you know, once every 20, 30, 40 years, we get these sort of blow off tops, um, which are major impulsive waves. And then that <clears throat> basically brings to an end, you know, the, the entire, well, I mean, then it, then it just comes down to what level are you correcting? You know, then it comes down to what level are you correcting here? You know, is this a super cycle? Is it a grand super cycle? Because to me, this is a grand super cycle.